Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to Skyblock 116. I hope you guys are having a good day. We are back here in the Skyblock world where my first priority is going to be setting up some farms. And I think that's going to be the result of this episode is hopefully we're going to have a pretty decent setup for tree farming, for crop farming and of course for cobblestone farming. We kind of have one of those already and the first thing I'm going to do is set up a roof over my head just in case phantoms start spawning because I have no idea what day we're on. I guess I could check here. We are still on day one of the Minecraft world here so I am fairly confident that phantoms will not spawn. However, my first task here is going to be to mine a lot of cobblestone and this is all going to happen pretty slowly right now because we only have a single cobblestone generator set up and we're all just going to have to mine the cobblestone manually. But I want to do a couple of things differently in this Skyblock series. The first one, of course, being the fact that we have replay mod running in the background so that I can show you guys different perspectives on the tasks I'm doing, especially for the more grindy stuff that we're doing here. But the other thing is I want to do a little bit more beautification of the world as we go. And considering we're starting with some of the newer blocks from the Nether update, stuff like the Basalt that I now have all of this stuff set up around the cobblestone generator, I kind of want to make sure this area stays a little bit prettier. And so I think one of the things I'm going to do is decorate each build as I do it. We're going to start off with the cobblestone generator. And once I've got enough cobblestone here, I should be able to make a go of what I have in mind. This is, of course, going to involve getting a few more stone tools on the go because otherwise I'll be stuck in there with no means of getting out. Thankfully, I still have a couple of oak logs from the last tree that we took down and I have plenty of saplings left over in this chest. We have two oak saplings and we have one already planted here. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a furnace. We're going to use the furnace. Oh, there we go. Hot topic achievement. Very, very good. Going to use the furnace to make ourselves some charcoal. And with that, I'm going to make myself some torches. Let's throw in the two sticks that we've got here. That should be enough to make one charcoal. And with the torches, we can make sure that this tree is going to have light to it 24-7 or however many <laughs> minutes are in a Minecraft day. I think it's 20 in total. But it's always going to have a light nearby. Therefore, it's always going to have the opportunity to grow. There we go. We're also going to get the grass to spread around here because grass also needs light on the block above it in order for it to grow and spread successfully. And we need to make sure that while we are terraforming the island here, while we are removing sections of the island and restructuring them, that we do not lose any of the grass. Because even though we could pull some grass from the neighboring islands if we want to, it is of course going to be a little bit difficult to get out there in the first place and very time consuming for the grass to spread back. So if we can keep the grass around here, so much the better. Now we have a few mobs spawning out there on that bridge in the distance and I'm not going to worry too much about them right now because None of them should really spawn at a range where they are going to be doing me any harm. Phantoms are the only thing that concerns me right now, and quite frankly, I think phantoms are not going to be popping up for the next couple of days. Hopefully, by then, we should have a bed. But for now, the task is just to acquire as much cobblestone as possible so that I can make good on my plans to expand the island here. So with a little bit more cobblestone now under our belts and with the grass here spreading nice and evenly, I'm actually going to pillar up here and just check this platform in case there are any skeletons or zombies or anything that has burned up after the sun rose. It doesn't look like there is, sad to say, but we could have had some bones or maybe some arrows or something from that, which would have been a little bit of a help to getting our world started here. But really all we need to do is grab a little bit of the bone meal from the bone blocks that we found in the nether. And some folks, of course, said that we could compost some of the stuff that we got from the nether wart in the, uh, in the nether to get ourselves some bone meal. So that is an alternative way of doing that but instead we brought three bone blocks over and we could always use those to grow some of these trees if we wanted to but I have a different use for those in mind because if we break this down into bone meal and grab one of the buckets here 
there is a pretty neat trick you can do with water here, which is going to guarantee that we get ourselves another water source. Now, it's very important that we make sure the lava is blocked off for when we do this trick. But right now, as you can see, this water stream is flowing down into the cobblestone generator here, and it's only one water source. But it flows down with two blocks, and if we bone meal those blocks, what you actually get is some seagrass growing into the spot there, which creates another water source, which we can now put in a bucket, and that returns to the state it was before, but we have duplicated the water, meaning that we can start an infinite water source this way and have enough water to hydrate the farmland that we're going to be making out of the dirt platform we have here. So I'm going to pop that back in this chest for now. And it looks like we got another water source from the bottom of that as well. So we can pop that back in the chest. And once we've created a little enclosure over here for the water, we can set up a two by two area where we will have an infinite water source. I think for now, I'm going to do that over here on this side. So we just have a nice, simple two by two area here, which is going to provide infinite water, regardless of which block we end up picking up the water from. We can put a water source there and a water source there using these two buckets. And we have an infinite water source, which is a great start in any any skyblock world and thankfully we had the bone meal to be able to do it yeah there we go <laughs> got ourselves some infinite water nice and easily remember of course it's going to be important to either light up or spawn proof these areas with slabs to make sure that nothing will end up spawning here when we end up moving a little bit further away and I think one of the other things I want to do around this cobblestone generator is decorate it in kind of the same way as I've decorated the lava flow in my survival guide world, which is to say the basalt is around the center. We don't have any blackstone to use on this, sadly, because renewable blackstone is not really possible for us right now. Although apparently there is a crafting recipe for it in this pack. We will see what that involves a little bit later. But I want to start building up these columns of cobblestone around the columns of basalt here and decorating it a little bit more. And then once we have a little bit more wood there we go the tree has grown once we have a little bit more wood we can turn this into charcoal we can use the charcoal to make a few uh smooth stone pieces because we can you know smelt cobblestone in a furnace to get smooth stone and from there we can decorate around the outside with smooth stone making this whole thing look a lot more attractive for an early cobblestone generator So there we go, we've got seven oak logs total. Now we'll pop four of those in the furnace. In fact, we can just use one wooden pickaxe to turn one of them into a piece of charcoal, and then the charcoal can go to smelt up the rest of that if we want to. Let's very quickly make sure that we can break all of these leaves to get any more saplings that are going to drop. Yep, we've got one there, perfect. We can replant that in just a second. I can see a second sapling up there in the leaves. Perfect. That's a third. Very good. Okay, our oak farming operation is off to a very promising start. So I'm going to replant that there for now, and then we'll put the rest of the saplings in the chest. But from here, I think what I want to do is use some of the cobblestone here to create a platform of bottom half slabs once again so we are creating a space that is not spawnable and we're going to use some of the dirt that we've already moved from this platform we're going to start a separate tree farm off to one side away from the cobblestone generator so nothing is going to burn up so the uh, lava cannot catch any of the leaves on fire and then from there we can start working on a slightly more expansive tree farming operation so we'll come out over the void we want to make sure that we have a big enough platform around the outside of these saplings so that we can run around and harvest the leaves without falling off the platform and in order to guarantee that the saplings we're getting from this are going to be renewable we want to have at least three or four blocks distance so that there is as little leaf overlap as possible so i think we're going to put the other dirt block there we've got plenty of space in between these two trees and hopefully the leaves shouldn't overlap even if they end up growing some of the larger sizes if they do that of course we'll be getting more saplings out of the deal anyway So we're going to leave this tree here as well. We've got two saplings planted in our tree farm, and this is going to expand slowly but surely over the course of the next little while, because as long as we can maximize our tree farming output at this point, the better. I do want to make sure that we leave one sapling in that chest at all times, just in case anything should happen to any of these. We have the opportunity to rebuild the tree farm from scratch if we need to. But I think maybe we place one more set of blocks over on this side, one here and then one here. 
like so, and then we surround those with cobblestone, and that's a pretty decent start to a tree farm once we have enough saplings to populate this entire area. As with the sapling on this platform, it's going to be important that these get light at all times of day, so I've put the torch there as well, and I'm hoping that the basalt platform, the basalt bridge that I built over the top of this isn't going to interfere with the growth of these trees, but it looks like it should be fine. We should also keep an eye out for any food that we get the opportunity to grow from these or any apples that fall from the leaves here because <laughs> we will uh, start to lose a little bit of hunger now that we've been spending some time mining cobblestone here in the overworld. But since it is now night, I'm going to return to farming a little bit more cobblestone for our platform growth operation and hopefully by the time I've spent another night mining cobblestone we'll have plenty of resources to work with and the trees will have grown so that we can do a little bit more with the resources we've been gathering. Uh oh folks, <laughs> we have our first visitor and yep looks like he is going to make it down here. I'm going to attempt to hit him a couple of times with my pickaxe just to keep him at arm's length here. The pickaxe will still do a heart or two of damage here and there. There we go and he did actually just drop us some gravel. That is interesting because I thought the gravel would have been removed from the data packs in this version of the map considering that piglins will now barter it. Uh-oh, there's a creeper up there as well. But well, I guess I'd better make myself a stone sword, just so I have a slightly better weapon to attack with. A stone axe would probably not be a bad idea either, but we might save that for when we are actually chopping a larger amount of trees. For now, I think we should be safe down here, and I will definitely prioritize lighting up or slabbing that platform as soon as morning comes. Okay folks, morning is here and we have a couple of unwanted visitors, or at least there were a couple of creepers up here that seem to have now despawned, and I'm gonna see if I can take care of this spider, get myself a little bit of string. Yes, okay, we got two string, that's not too bad, that is a start towards our first bed, or maybe even a fishing rod, if a fishing rod only needs two string, maybe we will be able to get a little bit of extra stuff from that. But yeah, this platform here is becoming a little bit too dangerous at night, so this is definitely going to require lighting up or slabbing over. I think lighting up is potentially going to be a better option because we have another tree now, which means we can get ourselves a little bit more charcoal, including the stuff that we've already got here in the furnace. We'll be doing pretty well. So let's turn this into an axe. Let's actually get started working with a stone axe over here at the tree farm. And you know what? I think I could probably do with making a hoe as well, just so we can take down the leaves a little bit faster. Certainly feels like a better option than punching them now that hoes have that benefit. So let's take down some of this. Yeah, that does feel a little bit faster, doesn't it? Doesn't guarantee any more sapling drops or apple drops or anything yet, but hopefully we should be able to get a couple of those here and there. And look at the saplings we're already getting. This is perfect. Once we are able to enchant these with fortune, which will probably happen when we can get villager trading started, not for a little while yet, but we will be able to get a really good amount of other saplings and stuff and, and potentially apples as well out of tree farms like this. And so I expect what I will probably end up doing is waiting to harvest the jungle tree from over there and the dark oak tree, which I know is out in one of the other diagonal directions until I have a fortune hoe, which is probably going to take a little while, but there we are. And now, like I said, we have a few more oak logs that I can turn into charcoal, and we can start turning some of the cobblestone that we have here into smooth stone to decorate the cobblestone generator. I plan on decorating a few of the other projects here as well, like the tree farm, but we'll probably do that in future episodes. We've got to take things one step at a time. The last thing I want to do with this episode is probably actually move the sapling since it hasn't grown and I want to open out this area of land here into a crop farm of sorts which is going to mean preserving the grass outwards in a different direction so that we can turn the existing part of the island here into a flat area that we can use to farm crops and that's going to be at the center of our operation here. 
So with a little bit more charcoal currently cooking up in the furnace, I'm going to convert what I have left over into torches and use those to, first of all, we've uh, lit up the grass platform over there, and we're also going to light up this basalt area over here so that we don't get too many unwanted mobs spawning on here during the night. In the next episode, we'll probably want to make a mob spawner anyway so we can start collecting mob drops, so having this platform lit up is obviously going to be of benefit there, and in the meantime, it's going to prevent any unwanted creepers or zombies or anything from coming down here and harassing me while I am generating some of this cobblestone. I also need to start organizing my storage a little bit more and so I think I'm going to put all of the farming supplies and stuff like that into this chest over here. Oh, we've made the advancement farmer. For what? <laughs> what have I done? Oh yeah, that just kicks off the category, I guess. Okay, well we're going to put all of the saplings and stuff in here just so we have some place to put those. Once again, this should be far enough away from the trees that they're not interfering at all and thinking about it we could start using some bone meal to grow these trees if I felt like it but right now I think we should be okay just to continue as we are and open up this area into some farmland. Having placed these oak slabs on the bottom half of the second block down around the island means that we can just start removing these without any concerns about them falling into the void. This block here is of course at the level where it's going to fall into the void there's nothing below that but we can start breaking all of these blocks above and the slab just provides us a helpful step down into the center of the farm and we're going to expand this outwards probably removing the oak slabs here and expanding it outwards until we have a 7x7 platform of dirt which is going to be the start of our crop farm here. We will continue the oak slabs around the outside of that making sure that the entire thing can be walked around on a spawn proof area and with the grass having spread out in this direction towards this grass preservation area that I've set up we can just start taking away some of the blocks from the original island and turning this section into farmland safe in the knowledge that the grass is preserved over on that little outcropping of the island there. In the meantime, another tree has grown, so I'm taking down the rest of that, and I'm hoping beyond hope that we'll get apples or something like that from this tree when we take down the leaves, because I'm hurting for some food right now. Nope, didn't get any apples from that at all. What we did get was three more oak saplings, which is great. We now have a surplus of oak saplings there in the chest, and hopefully a few more of those are gonna end up growing. In the meantime, we can turn some of these logs into slabs and that can continue the platform around our new farming area. I'm even doing what I never ended up doing in my last Skyblock playthrough and moving the original starter chest out of the way. We're going to put the crafting table probably for now over here in this central tree farming area so that that's somewhere nice and central. We're probably going to move the contents of this chest as well, but we will do that in a second. And the furnace has been smelting up some smooth stone for me so I can beautify the area around the cobblestone generator. Our grass platform over here has spread enough that I can completely remove the bridge to that and the grass will continue spreading from there and right here this is going to be our farming platform we have a decent amount of dirt left over for us to create a passive mob spawning platform in a few episodes time but for now this area here that i've marked out with the oak boundary is going to be a seven by seven farming field for crops hopefully we'll be able to keep this dirt block yes okay managed to snag it and we're going to place a bottom half slab in there now if i grab the buckets of water out of here or at least one bucket that I can fill with water like so. We can waterlog this slab and now that should hopefully not spill water down into the rest of the world. Nope, looks like that's absolutely fine. And we can hoe the remaining area around the outside of this to turn it all into farmland. Every block in this seven by seven area should be hydrated by the single water source in the center. And there goes my hoe. Oh well, <laughs> I'll make another one in a second. But with the uh, seeds that we have in here, we can start a little wheat farm. We could even grow some of that with bone meal. Once again, if we ended up using Using the bone meal for that we could start the food production nice and quickly but if we craft another hoe we can finish turning all of this dirt and grass into farmland and this is now the new growing area for all of our foodstuffs i'm going to turn the melon slice here into melon seeds like so we could even start growing sugarcane adjacent to that water source in the center if we wanted to but this is looking like a neat little farming operation coming together right at the center of our skyblock world now remember that crops will also need a little bit of light to get them started and without adequate lighting they will pop off the block they are planted on. We've got a couple of torches around here but I think the shroom light seems like the perfect block to start our little farm growing around here and with the blocks slowly starting to hydrate before long we should have some crops growing up. In the meantime 
meantime, I'm going to get back to the cobblestone generator because I feel a little bit safer overnight underneath the canopy of these cobblestone blocks that I've placed here. We'll be safe from phantoms and then in the morning we can start decorating the cobblestone farm. Ah, morning is here once again, and the farm is actually growing splendidly well. A few of these crops are already starting to show signs of life, which is excellent news. And one thing I always forget about phantom spawning is that if you're down below sea level, which I believe we are here at Y62 and a half because of the uh, slabs that we're standing on, Phantoms shouldn't spawn anyway. So right here at the cobblestone generator, it's actually a good thing to have a roof over my head because I'm at Y64, so phantoms would be able to spawn there. But if I'm down here on the rest of these slabs, I don't think I'm high up enough in the world that phantoms will actually spawn because they don't spawn while you're in caves and stuff like that in the overworld. In a default Minecraft world, it's only when you return to the surface. So thankfully, I can roam around the rest of these platforms and I shouldn't really encounter any of them. Would still like to have a bed though so we can skip through the night and actually get some other stuff done during the day. But outside of that we have a little bit more charcoal in the furnace which means a few more of these blocks can be turned into natural stone. And what I'm going to do around the outside here is start to build up a few pillars of cobblestone basically anywhere on the outside of the basalt construction that we have here forming the cobblestone generator. And then we're going to add little slabs and stuff to change up the height of the structures here a little bit just to make it kind of fun looking from the outside. Really make it feel like a weird volcanic formation has started here much like we have in the survival guide world and that's going to make the generator here feel a little bit more unique. So having surrounded the entire thing basically with cobblestone, we can vary the height here and there just by using some cobblestone slabs. I think we'll put one there, one there. The rest of that looks fine to me. We'll probably put a little bit more height variation into the ones at the sides, make those perhaps a little bit more extreme. Do the same around the opposite side here. Have a nice kind of slow gradient coming down the side there. That's looking pretty nice. I like this a lot. And one interesting option we have here is to replace this basalt block behind the cobblestone with some other kind of block that cannot be easily broken using a pickaxe. And we don't really have many choices for that right now, except in this chest here, we have 10 obsidian, which frankly, I'm not going to end up using to make a nether portal because the game has already supplied one by starting us in the nether and forcing us to return to the overworld. So you know what? We could use a block of obsidian and place it behind here because we now have the option to farm obsidian anytime we want to using those portals. And there's even an obsidian ledge on the side of the portal which we can use for that. So I'm going to take this out here. We're actually going to pop the block of obsidian behind there. And now I can just hold down the uh, left click button whenever I'm mining at the cobblestone generator because the pickaxe will just be able to swing away without danger of breaking the block behind and causing the lava to flow anywhere else. Now I'm going to build up around the outside of here with the remainder of this smooth stone just to kind of give the uh, border to the cobblestone here as well and we can turn a few of these into slabs now that we have the option to do that of course. And as I'm doing this more trees have started growing in the tree farm and it really feels like our skyblock adventure is off to a great start.
And there we go, folks. Have you ever seen a cobblestone generator this pretty in a skyblock world? <laughs> maybe you have, maybe you haven't, I don't know. But I'm really happy with the design of this. I think it looks great. And with a little bit more charcoal churning through the furnace here and there, I should be able to make myself a few more torches and we can light this thing up in areas where the lava light will not be quite enough to reach those occasional solid blocks. Because once again, I do not want any of this stuff ending up spawning mobs on my watch. I really don't feel like having to deal with mobs on this central island, but I'm pretty sure the light levels here should be enough with the lava centered in the farm, more or less. And then these little kind of alcoves here and there can now be lit by torchlight, and the whole thing feels a little bit more secure. I will reinstate the covering over the top of this, but I just wanted to see it without that for a little while so we can take in the volcanic majesty. And now our melons are growing and the wheat looks like it is almost fully mature as well. That's fantastic news and that seems like a perfect place to wrap up this episode. The farms are improving, folks, and I do hope you've enjoyed this episode of Minecraft Skyblock in 116. Please don't forget to leave a like on it if you did. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.